like. Um, hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment, as promised, and only two minutes late is Mike Gorenstein. He's the CEO of Pronos Group. Mike, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me again. Mike, you put out a press release today. I don't know whether you did that to help today's uh, content, <laughs> but you have now closed the $100 million bond mm. deal, which we were talking about the last time you were here. So uh, we also sent Fraser out with camera crew to yeah. uh, shoot you guys out in Stainer, Ontario. Mm. And so what's going on with Kronos mm. now that you've been on NASDAQ for almost, what is it, two months? You know, I don't think it's even been two months, probably about five weeks. Five time, weeks. It, it, time flies. Okay, because <laughs> I noticed right away, as soon as you went on NASDAQ, that your stock volume on NASDAQ was mm. uh, 3 million shares versus 2 million shares on the, t on the TF, on the, the Canadian exchange. Mm -hmm. So is that still the case? Are you still trading a uh, substantial increase in volume on NASDAQ versus Canada? You know, I'd, I'd have to check, to be honest. I, I focus more on the business than on where the trading activity is. Uh, well, I'd say probably, <laughs> probably not watching your share price. <laughs> yeah, you know, it'd be pretty, uh, pretty tough if I if I stared at the screen all day. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I think I think it might depend on the day, but uh, I just imagine, given that it's uh, another, um, you know, another avenue, and you have a lot more institutions that are able to trade, mm -hmm. that it's probably going to be higher volume. But I don't know what the difference is between the two. Cool. Um, so you've got the, is it 230,000 square foot facility that you're completing right now? Uh, it's 286. 286. Mm -hmm. And at what point will that be full of plants? Uh, it'll be, plants will start going in the summer, so about June, July. Okay. Yeah. And how much of a crop do you expect to get out of that facility? So uh, in total at piece, uh, over the first year at full run rate, about 40,000 kilos mm -hmm. is uh, what we're projecting. and. Uh, so roughly 33,000 kilos coming out of that facility. Hmm. Wow. And so what portion of that do you anticipate selling as dried flour versus extract? You know, I think it, it's going to really depend on timing. So I think that you'll see a lot more derivative products once the regulations open up. So the form factor matters a lot. Uh, a lot of also what we were doing when we were projecting out how we were going to expand is premium flour tends to come from indoor facilities, and you've seen that a lot already in the industry, but focusing on premium flour out of that facility, and uh, as we see the form factors uh, sort of open up and we're able to start making vape pens, edibles, that's when you'll see an uh, increase in greenhouse capacity to feed those channels. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you anticipate then that the premium dried flour will continue to be an indoor product versus what you produce in the greenhouse, which, which will be diverted towards ex extracts. I think that's right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think you, you traditionally see that. Okay. Let's talk about yield per square foot annualized. Mm -hmm. what, what are you looking at in terms of the greenhouse facility that you've got now? And what are you looking at in terms of the indoor facility you've got? So we're looking at bench space. This is where it gets tricky because right. you're, as you'll see when you, when you play the video tour, the way that we've actually set up cultivation, you have separated rooms for vegetative space, for flower space, for propagation, so it can be skewed. So if we're looking at you know, what, how many turns are you getting and what's the yield per square foot depending on the cultivar, you can get anywhere from 40 to 75 grams per square foot. Per crop per crop, mm. and right now around 5.7 turns. We're hoping to get that uh, up up and over six. Okay. Uh, so again, it varies. 400 to 500 grams per square foot per year. Right, but then you have to factor in, you know, so you've got vegetative space and propagation. So it, it's not always apples to apples, and it's a tough thing with comparing all the producers. Right, right. That's one thing that I'm having a hard time <laughs> gauging, is because when you ask somebody about their yield per square foot, the question is, well, are you, in incorporating just the grow space that's under cultivation, or are you including the aisles? Mm -hmm. Are you including the, you know, the processing space, the storage space, <laughs> the entire facility? I mean, that's what I, I have a it, hard time. You know, I think it's a metric, a lot of these metrics that have evolved is sort of in the early thinking of just capacity, capacity, capacity. But mm -hmm. again, if you look at a mature industry and you're trying to value a company, there's really no, you're not looking at, uh, at ABI or Diageo or Novartis, it's how much can you, can you produce? And again, it goes into, let's say, if you believe that uh, flour isn't the biggest part of the market and you think derivatives are bigger, uh, the yield per square foot is less important than what cannabinoids are you yielding per square foot. That's really what drives it because mm -hmm. you're, not a, you know, you're not selling extract based on the weight of the flour. Mm -hmm. How many cannabinoids were contained in that? Which cannabinoids were there? What does that spectrum actually produce as, as far as an effect? So I think it's, right. we're not really selling corn. Right. 
Yeah, it's interesting because from an investor perspective, I mean, who cares about how much yield per square foot? It's all about earnings per share at the end of the day, right? right? right. And that that stems from sales and cost of sales and, and, mm. and the multiples therefrom. So what, in your mind, is the most valuable as a CEO of the company? What's the most important metric for you? I, I think margin is very important. And I think uh, I think looking at it as cost per gram versus cost of goods is a, is a big mistake. I mean, a lot of new investors look at it as COGS thinking it means cost per gram. That's not what it should mean. It should be about the actual products. So for me, it's about it's making sure we're innovating in the product side. We're always improving quality because long term, when you look at, uh, at the global demand, supply will eventually catch up. And it's going to be, do you have products that people want? Mm -hmm. How efficient are you at making those products? And being able to ultimately deliver a quality product and having a positive gross margin is going to be very important. Hmm. Great. So then from Kronos' standpoint, you've got mm -hmm. stainers coming online fast. Yep. When we spoke, I guess it was probably over a year ago, you had a couple of other projects going. And what's mm -hmm. the status of those? How important are they going to be into 2018? There's a lot of projects going and uh, you know, we think they're all very important or we wouldn't have started them. Right. So uh, Israel is moving along. Uh, you know, we were, I was just in Israel a few weeks ago, very excited. Hmm. Uh, every time... Should we uh, send a film crew? I think, I think you should. It's, yeah, uh, okay. you, know, you start to really understand when we talk about uh, how much climate matters when you, when you show up there and you just realize you can't stare up uh, at the sky because of, of the, you know, the abundance of sunlight. Right. It's a great climate for growing, but we also are starting to see that there's going to be a real domestic market. Hmm. Uh, so that's going really well. One of the new initiatives we have is a partnership with MedMen, mm -hmm. and we're really excited about being able to bring that here. It's, you know, we've, looked, uh, we've looked around. It's the best retail experience we've seen. I think it's the, one of the most recognizable cannabis brand in the world today. Mm -hmm. uh, and being able to, to have brand leverage coming out of Los Angeles, Manhattan, Vegas, and, and really have a dominant presence there. Right. something we're excited to be able to, to bring and expand into Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that should be very interesting. Uh, let's, uh, let's leave it there. We'll come back to you again in a quarter's okay. time and uh, catch up with you again. Thanks for Sounds coming good. in today. All right, thank you.